Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. I'm Christy Casciano. We have just learned the Syracuse Police Department will be holding a news conference in what appears to have been a tragic accident along I-690 eastbound last night. A 51-year-old man standing on the side of the highway was killed. The driver who struck him, Syracuse University basketball head coach Jim Beheim. The coach released a statement this afternoon saying in part, quoting now, I am heartbroken that a member of our community died as a result of last night's accident. Julie and I extend our deepest sympathies to the Jimenez family. We're also learning more about the victim, Jorge Jimenez. These are photos from his Facebook page and we spoke with his niece in Cuba by phone just a short time ago and she tells us Jimenez came to Syracuse from Cuba. His family there is saddened by his death. We've also learned Jimenez has two sons who also live here in Syracuse and a daughter who lives in Florida. We do have team coverage of this tragedy for you this afternoon. Our sports director Stephen Fani here in the studio with more in just a moment. Our Jeff Kulikowski is live inside the Carrier Dome. He has reaction from the university. Let's start now with Andrew Dunn. Donovan. He is live outside Syracuse Police Department headquarters with the latest on the investigation. And Andrew, we know that you've been in touch with your sources close to this probe. What have you learned? Well, Christy, right now those sources, including the Onondaga County District Attorney, say that at this point in this investigation, this is an accident. We will hear more from the DA and the Syracuse Police Chief in the next hour, and we expect them to reiterate just that and explain exactly why they consider this crash an accident. Detectives have been working the case throughout the overnight, throughout the day, and right now they tell us that Coach Bayheim was driving east on Interstate 690 near Thompson Road when his vehicle hit Jimenez. Jimenez had gotten out of the car he was in, which had become disabled in the middle of the road after moments earlier hitting a guardrail on the visibly icy roads. That's when Beheim passed by, we're told, trying to avoid the car, but ended up hitting and killing Jimenez. Authorities say that Beheim, who was only a few hours beyond his game at the Dome, is cooperating with the police investigation. We're told he stayed at the scene of the crash until going to police headquarters last night where no alcohol or drugs, no alcohol, no drugs were detected in his body. We'll bring you the chief and DA's comments live on News Channel 9 at 5 o'clock, but right now we'll continue our coverage with News Channel 9's Jeff Kulakowski. He's live inside the Carrier Dome where Jeff, the university, dealing with uh, right now a heartbreaking situation involving the most high-profile person arguably in central New York. And Andrew, of course, he was here last night celebrating that big win over Louisville with his team in the Carrier Dome as they prepare for the big game this weekend with Duke. And I can tell you, I've been here at the Carrier Dome for most of the day, and this tragic news is hanging heavy over this famous arena, which just so happens to house the court that bears the legendary coach's name on it. SU Chancellor Kent Severud releasing a statement this afternoon expressing deep sadness that a member of our Central New York community was tragically killed in an accident last night involving Coach Jim Beheim. Severud goes on to say Coach Beheim is understandably heartbroken by the loss of life. On behalf of our entire Syracuse University family, Dr. Ruth Chen and I extend our deepest condolences to the Jimenez family and all those grieving this terrible loss. SU Athletic Director John Wildhack also releasing a statement mid-morning reflecting the profound sense of sadness this school and athletic department are feeling today. It reads in part, we extend our deepest condolences to all impacted by this tragic accident. And despite all of the emotion feeling uh, being felt in our community and across this campus, things here at the Carrier Dome have not come to a halt. They're setting up right now for ESPN Sports Center at 5 o'clock tonight. There is an SU women's game tonight against Pittsburgh. Then, of course, the preps continue for game day on Saturday and also the big contest between the SU men's basketball team and the Duke Blue Devils here in the Carrier Dome. Live at the Dome, Jeff Kulikowski, News Channel 9. Christy. Jeff, Andrew, thank you for your coverage. We want to bring in sports director Stephen Fani. Now, you were at the Mellow Center today. And just imagine, it must have been a very, very sad atmosphere. Yeah, that's right. I arrived at the Mellow Center right around 9.45 for my weekly 10 o'clock interview with Jerry McNamara. Normally, I just walk to the practice courts by myself and start setting up. But today, I was met by a couple of SU officials who had me stay put in the lobby. Jerry then reached out to politely cancel the interview. I can tell you, I saw several staff members within the athletic department who had just heard the news. Everyone was talking in quiet, hushed tones as word of this tragedy started to spread. Now, obviously, 
obviously basketball is of much lesser concern right now, but we have had a few viewers reaching out to us this afternoon asking if the Duke game is still on, if Jim Beheim is going to coach on Saturday. I can assure you that the game is still on. In fact, we've confirmed with ESPN that there is no change to the network's game day plans. As for Coach Behan, the honest answer is we really don't know. We've reached out to the university. We've been told that other than the prepared statements released today by Beheim, by Kent Severud, and by John Wildhack, no other comments will be made at this time. In fact, the university wouldn't even say if the team practiced today as scheduled. Again, basketball is of much lesser importance to everyone right now as the focus is placed on the victim and his family. Christy. All right, Steve, thanks for sharing that with us. And. Um, Again, we are expected to hear more from Syracuse police. They are having a press conference at 5 o'clock. We will be there live, bringing you the very latest. Also, uh, check in with localesquire.com. We will continue to provide updates there and the latest information for you 